Today's show is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at theqfilmcast.net. Just click the link in the upper right-hand corner and choose from over 150,000 titles for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. That's audible.com. Q. Q. I got something here. I want to see if you know what this is. A Q. A Q. That's right. Yeah, I like that. Hello and welcome from deep inside Jolly Roger Studio. This is the Q Filmcast. And whether you're listening online worldwide or perhaps nationwide on one of our affiliate stations, thanks as always for tuning in. If it's our first time together, let me tell you what we do. We are the show, which brings to you our review of a particular film currently streaming on Netflix Instant. We gather here each week, Jolly Roger Studio, where we go around the table to tell you what we thought. That along with our uh, top three list which is always inspired by the movie in question. So, what movie is that? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> this week in the queue, it's the uh, it's the 1987, uh, what the hell happened to my Huxtable? <laughs> Horror Noir. Horror Noir. Okay. Horror Noir. God, I like the way that sounds. Yeah. Uh, Angel Heart, uh, starring Mickey Rourke, Robert De Niro, and Lisa Bonet. So, unless you have a thing about chickens, keep listening to see if you agree or disagree <laughs> with our take. Or if you haven't seen it, just keep listening to see if it's something you may want to queue up yourself. So there you go. That's the way the game is played. Once again, I'm Michael, along with, as always, to my left, James Hard Sub Savage. What's up, Maestro? Oh, I'm doing okay, Savage. You know, everything's all right. Um, woke up, knew exactly who I was. Good. Yeah. Didn't have to scream it in a mirror. Good. Yeah. I am the boy. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Little nod to the film. I always throw something like that. Do you that. have a hard boiled egg? Uh, you know what? That is, uh, some, you know, some religions that's considered the, uh, the soul. I did not know that. I did. I learned it from Angel Heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just go ahead and introduce you now, uh, Gumbo Johnson, uh, Fine. Max Gumbo Johnson, sitting across from me over there. Hi. How's it going? Yeah. Your, your name is perfectly placed tonight. Why is that? Because I have some, I have some real intense gumbo questions to ask you. You can ask me yeah. anything you want to know about gumbo. Yeah. You're going <laughs> to, you got a new ingredient for your gumbo? Oh, there is. There is. Mm, not based on this film. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's round that out in a second. We got a we got a path to go down for there. Uh look at it, hoodie. Matthew Saint Hoodie. Hey, patron hi. saint of quality outerwear. That's Although you know in, in certain parts of the country, uh, outerwear is not really needed. You get big pit stains. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like beige uh uh jackets. Mm. Yeah. Things like that. You know, in some cultures, uh outerwear is considered a uh the keeper of the soul. <laughs> Some culture. Did you Some just call cultures. me an egg? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Basically. Kind of. Uh, what well, came first? The deviled egg. egg. Yeah. Oh. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Yeah, I know. He kind of, I was going to work that in later. Thanks, man. <laughs> You're welcome. Perfectly placed, though. I liked it. All right. Man, that's good. And uh, who you listening to over there? That's our producer, Adam the Bomb Rogers. How's you? Adam the Bomb Rogers. Nice to see you. All right, guys, let's get into this one, Angel Heart, 1987. But before we do that, uh, let's talk about how to keep up with us any way you want, really. I'm talking uh, Google. It's there. Just Google it. You'll find the Q Filmcast, uh, Facebook, Twitter, iTunes, YouTube, Google+. Plus. Um, but you know what I recommend? What? It doesn't matter which way you want to go. You should go here first, and that is the QFilmcast.net. Dot .net. That's our website. You go there. Tell us what you think of this show or any other show that we've reviewed. Uh, give us your thoughts. Uh, let us know how we're doing. Feedback. We love that. Uh, so the QFilmcast.net. You guys ready to queue up the conversation? Yeah. Sure. What do you Angel say there, producer? Let's do it. He says, let's do it. I say, oh, Lord. Let's talk about the film. Angel Heart, 1987. Uh, I might need some help with this. Written by William Hortzberg. Hortzberg. This was Hortzberg. Hortzberg. Is that how you say it? That's how I've saw You read it. the book, didn't you? I did read the book. Oh man, this is a pretty popular oh, book too. A lot of people love book. this book. Called Falling, Falling, Angel. Falling Angel. Falling Angel. A lot of people said this uh film did it justice. Some people said it didn't. I think a lot of people said it did so. I know it was it was I wouldn't say loosely based on the book, but they took some different it was turns. Specifically no, based they on the book. they saying that it's actually pretty close <laughs> to the book. It's pretty close to the book. There's it's one, very faithful. Okay, novel. it is, but there's one major turn that they put in there and that's uh location geography one. Yeah, the location be, was I was gonna say Lisa Bonet. <laughs> yeah. She was in the book. <laughs> she came with the book. That was awesome. That's why I bought it. It's like, whoa, it comes with Lisa Bonet. Did you read the book <laughs> after you watched the film? Yes. I watching, still have it somewhere. 
I'm going to have to borrow that from you. Let's talk about who directed this film. That's Alan Parker. Anybody know who he is? He's he had a project, right? Huh? Uh, Alan, Parker. Alan Parker. Alan <laughs> Parker. That's Alan Parsons. Oh, that's right. <clears throat> nice. I was wrong, too. <laughs> oh, you tried. You really tried. tried. He tried to thread the needle. Alan Parker, man. Pink Floyd, The Wall, mm-hmm. Midnight Express, Mississippi Burning, Angela's Asses. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Is that, the, is that the porno version of Angela's Ashes? Right. Okay, yeah. Angela's Ashes. Let me right. allow me to retort. Uh, Avita, and then The Life of David Gale. Anybody see this film? I've not seen that. I've it was heard a of good it. movie. Yeah. I'm yeah, telling you, it. surprising. I thought, okay, I heard this is okay. Good Spacey, movie. Right? And Fame. Did he do Fame? Yeah. Oh, he did do Fame. That's I like right. Fame. But for me, he's famous uh, for this film and The Life of David Gale. Two really good films. Midnight Express. And not, and not Midnight Express. And, of course, <laughs> Midnight Express, yeah. <laughs> come on. Yeah. Are you telling me to hurry up? No, oh. I'm saying, come on. That's what he, that's, that's like the best the, movie on the list is what he's saying. Yeah, I, I know. I, can <laughs> I thought that was I don't, not, I don't know about that. Yep. It's the uh, most biggest one. We're talking about Angel Heart, though. Um, this one here stars Mickey Rourke, Lisa Bonet. This is uh, right in the height of the Huxtable. Yep. Era, so this was quite a shocker for a lot of people. Yeah, Robert De Niro, especially Bill. Yeah, Bill. <laughs> Maybe uh, not. Yeah, he about choked on his Jello pudding pop. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, Robert De Niro, and as all these films do, they inspire a top three. This is no different, right? Angel Heart, 1987. This inspired a top three movie. I'm going to say Lucifer's. You guys can say Devils or Devilish characters. What do you want to go with? Devils. Devils. Devils Devil slash demons. Right. Top three. Devil, the slash devil, demon. but definitely a devil. Yeah. Okay. I was, but you can choose devil. the devil if you choose the devil. He's got a did. point. I right. like that wiggle room because I was very definitive. As this is Satan, but I okay. like your way. Let's go with devilish characters. Yeah. Top three movie devils. Okay. Uh, we will get into what we gave this film, but first thing we're going to do is talk about uh, what the critics thought. IMDb seven point four. What do you think of that hoodie? Yeah. All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Why not? Why why would you have a problem with that? I'm not rocking that boat. Yeah. <laughs> you want to take a stab at what the uh what the critics uh from Rotten Tomatoes said, Max? Me? Yeah, what uh, do you think? Eight point two. Seventy six. A seventy eight, man, but that's wow. close. It's close. It's always yeah. so good at that. It Last was un- time I overbid though, so I win this time. Boop 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 <laughs> boop. Point. Savage, what do you think of the users? What do you think the users gave this film? I can Rotten see your notes. Oh, eight point eighty-two percent. Sorry, it's, it's pretty okay. fresh. Adam, uh, you've been on the internet all day. I'm sure you. I didn't want. To, I didn't ask you. I figured you already know. You would have given the right answer. I didn't want to hear you. Okay. Didn't you right <laughs> I didn't want to hear you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's get into a synopsis of this film, and then we'll come back uh, after a trailer. We'll tell you what we thought. Angel Heart, 1987, and here's what you have. It's 1955. It's New York City. In small-time gumshoe, Harry Angel gets a new client, a mysterious man named Louis Cypher, who tells Harry that choosing him as a private investigator for this case was no accident, despite Harry not knowing who Cypher is, or in turn, Cypher not directly stating why he even chose Harry. The case is to locate a man by the name of Johnny Favorite, a popular singer before World War II, who was apparently reneged on a rather large debt owed to Cypher. The only clue given to Angel is that he served in the war and supposedly was institutionalized due to injuries and amnesia. As Harry progresses through the case, riddles beget riddles. Each turn takes a more ominous form. Harry soon finds himself in New Orleans, where he learns that the man he seeks and all who knew him are linked together through shadowy shadowy mysticism and voodoo. As Harry continues his investigation, one by one, the people he interviews turn up dead. Although Harry isn't sure if he wants to continue with the case, he does so if only to satisfy his own curiosity as to Johnny's whereabouts and why Saphir wanted to find him in the first place. As he gets closer to the answers, Harry Angel begins to understand that his role in the search may lead to places that are much closer than he dares to believe. Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> Terrifying. Frightening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cue the gumbo. Here's a trailer. Do you know what today, today is? Today is Wednesday. Does anything can happen today? Interest in Johnny is only in finding out if he's alive or if he's dead. You want me to check it out? Check it out. Who are you? I'm just a guy who was paid to snoop around. I'm gonna ask you again. Where is he? I don't know. Harry Angel has been hired to solve more than a mystery. He's dead, Mr. Angel. And if he isn't, he is to me. Are you afraid? Yeah, I'm afraid. To find than a killer. We don't go around murdering people, all right, Mr. Angel? The 
prince of darkness protects the powerful. And it may cost him more than his life. All I know is Johnny's running around bumping off everyone he used to know. And more and more, it's me who's on the line for it. Johnny's favorite was as close to true evil as she ever wanted to come. There's death everywhere these days. You killed him. And you're trying to pin it on me. The flesh is weak. Only the soul is immortal. Did you kill him? I got to hell. You got a burn for this angel. Get hell, hell, hell. Angel has been hired to search for the truth. Pray he doesn't find it. Angel Heart. Okay, so there you are. There's a trailer from the 1987 film that we're talking about tonight. Angel Heart from director Alan Parker starring uh, Mickey Rourke. As we do with all films, let's talk about some facts. A little bit of did you know? Did you know? About this film. There's a little bit of Did You Know. Max, you have a whole list of Did You Know. They're mm-hmm. good, too. All of them. Yeah. Got a quality list. Um, Alan Parker, the director of this film, claims that Robert De Niro's performance as Louis Cypher was so eerie and realistic that he generally avoided him during his scenes, letting him just direct himself. Hmm. What a baby. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> he was all scared. <laughs> That's funny, actually. Uh, Robert De Niro's performance is an impersonation of Martin Scorsese. Producer, what you think of that? Why not? Yeah, sure. <laughs> you want to hear my impersonation of producer? Why not? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. You queued that up. <laughs> you put it right there on the tee for me. Uh, check this out, Gumbo. Uh-huh. When Louis Cypher blows salt from his egg onto the restaurant table, Harry Angel takes a pinch and throws it over his left shoulder. Do you know why? Luck. Because no. by doing so, you blind the devil or your Thank evil you. angel. Thank you very, Which very much. Which is in turn pretty lucky. Yeah. I was just right. going to say superstitious, but Max uh, Gumbo Johnson took it a bit further. He knows how to cook Blind gumbo. the devil. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you solve it. You throw it over your shoulder into the gumbo. <laughs> He's got some voodoo in him. Uh, did you know that Marlon Brando was briefly considered for the role of Louis Cypher? Thank God he wasn't. How that would that have worked? That would have been great. What are you talking yeah, about? No, he, no. Was still, he was still good in 87. Yeah. Nah. I like De Niro. I'm a yeah. De Niro guy. Potato, potato. It would have been good. He would have done a good job. Yeah. I mean, he played the devil. Not to take anything away from Robert, but it would have been a good job. No, he's no Bob. Yeah, that's interesting, though. Marley Brando. Marley (laughs) Brando. Uh, Check this out. Uh, When producer Alan Marshall first approached Robert De Niro by phone about taking part in the film, De Niro asked, Hey, are you the guy who produced Birdie? (laughs) What? I don't know, but when Marshall, (laughs) I don't know, but when Marshall replied that he was, De Niro promptly hung up. So what's that supposed to mean? That's all they give me with that fact, too. I have no idea what to do with this. I guess he didn't like Birdie. I guess he hated Bertie or he hated the guy that produced it. Or he got turned down from a job or something. <laughs> Someone apologized for something because he's back on set. Right. Uh, Max, you read the book. Did you know that in the novel, the entire story was set in New York, as we talked about before? Yep. In the movie, much of the action of the film occurs in New Orleans. The change was suggested by Alan Parker. To Alan Parker, I'm sorry, by William Hertzberg himself. Yeah. What do you uh, got for facts and figures, Max? You had a few more. Anything else? Oh, I didn't mark any. Nah, else. heck with it. Let's get it going. I can t- I'll tell you. <laughs> what? The... Uh... I know this for a fact. What is I it? was there. Those little houses where uh, Epiphany and them lived, yeah. those are real little houses. You lived in the, one of them, didn't you? Back in the cane fields in mm-hmm. uh, Napoleonville. I went to them. Napoleonville. So yep. you can pin down the neighborhood. I know exactly where they are. I can really? take you right are, to them. Let's were, go there. Were they functional houses then? I mean, were they still utilized sort of. by migrant labor? No, there's no migrant labor. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Max, you are, <laughs> when it comes to uh, gumbo, when it comes to New Orleans, you are a man on the street. Uh, yeah, currency. Um, let's talk about that because you know we don't use thumbs up or thumbs down here. No, no. that's stupid. That's dumb, dumb. <laughs> we, you know why? Because we let the film tell us how we're going to rate it. Tonight we're going to use one through ten. I forgot what it was. Hard boiled. Hard boiled eggs. eggs. I think we should use pinches of salt at this point. Because I, mm, what I'm do you want to do? We can. I'm override. a little scared at this. I'm, you know what? We may need to blind the devil. I think we buy. go pinches of salt. Okay. All pinches right. of salt. There it is. Wow, pinches. Was, you guys are easy. <laughs> Changing on the fly. Went to the dentist. My mouth isn't working yet. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Uh, yeah, pinches of salt. There you go. Over the left shoulder. And when you tell it, you throw it over your left shoulder, please. Left. Let's go over to Max Gumbo. John. Speaking of gumbo, I don't know how you get gumbo, but dead white guy in gumbo, fantastic. <laughs> I love it the way my mom used it's to make it. It's the other white meat. Yeah, a little bit of dead white guy in my gumbo, fantastic. Yankee. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, non-Yankee, actually, believe me. Um, <laughs> all right, Max, uh, to you I go. One through ten pinches of salt over the left shoulder. Uh, Angel Heart, 1987, what are you going with? I'm going to go eight pinches of salt over the left shoulder. Eight pinches of salt. I really, really like this movie. I've over always liked this movie. I've yeah. always liked this movie. 
I've Amen. seen it many times. It has an inter- interesting rhythm, no doubt about it. <laughs> it All right, good. as well. You said it it does age well. Uh, one through ten, pinches of salt, Angel Heart, 1987. Throw it over the left shoulder. How many? Over the left shoulder, I'll go seven. I didn't know anything about this film. For yeah. some reason, I was confusing it with nine and a half weeks. You well, know, there was the not same. Not the same. Wow. No, no, it wasn't. But it's the same uh, Mickey Rourke era, mm-hmm. you know, before yeah. he was weird looking. Yeah, okay, you yeah. Know? And I knew Lisa Bonet was associated with it, but I thought it was I thought it was going to be the same thing. I didn't know it was a period piece. I didn't know that yeah. it was a noir piece. You knew it was sinister. Well, I knew that it was uh, reported to be hypersexual. Um, because Mickey Rourke went through that phase of his career, like in the late eighties up to 90 or something where he was the hot guy on campus or whatever. Yeah. It was, it was a surprise what this film was. Yeah. It's, it's a different burn. Yeah. It really is. Whether you like it or hate it, it, it does some different things. I think that's the way I see it. You and also, or to the, uh, refrigerator scene with him, uh, the Rourke and De Niro, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what it is in the butter. And I don't know. Eating eggs. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's funny to me. I just pictured that straight into my head. Or it could have been Brando. That would have been really Brando terrifying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Matthew St. Hoodie, to you I go. One through ten, pinches of salt. I'm between a six and a seven. I'm going to go seven now, but it's teetering. Teetering. Teeter the right way, okay? Uh, seven. <laughs> seven pinches of salt. Adam, well, load them up. Obviously, I already shocked everyone with my... Throwing it out there. I love this film. Uh, giving it a nine. All right. Going nine, pinches mm-hmm. of salt. That leaves it to me. I queued this thing up. I'm going to go nine. Right. This film, uh, I went and seen this in the theater in 87 because everybody said it was shocking. And I walked in there with my popcorn. I'm going to see some Lisa Bonet funk. Okay. You're right. But what I left with, with was, man, I, I really like movies now. It was one of those films that's like, I really like, I love movies now. This is one of the films that made me do that. It's always aged well for me. So I'm going to keep it at a nine. I'm going to keep it at uh, a special, right. a special event for me. Cool. All right, so there you go. That's, that's 40, what we think of 40 pinches of salt. Yeah, that's a lot of sodium. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You should yeah. probably be a little healthier than that. Well, it could be know. sea salt. Yeah. It's still salt. Still yeah. salt. How about this salt substitute? Can I at least use my salt substitute? Nope. Because I'm trying to watch no, my uh, the devil my blood pressure. The devil will scoff at your salt <laughs> substitute. Okay. Well, I'm going to go with salt substitute because I'm trying to watch my blood pressure. You can't blind the devil with salt substitute. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can't. <laughs> Didn't think about that. Now, Mrs. Dash. Devil hates Mrs. Dash. Dash, right. <laughs> what hates Mrs. Dash. Well, I'm going to dash on over to this Mrs. over here, and that's uh, Max Gumbo Johnson. He's going to get into uh, this film just a bit. You went eight dashes of salt mm-hmm. and uh, talk about basically why. Oh, uh, wow. Uh, well, I just, I've always gravitated towards, you know, sort of macabre kind of stuff and darker pieces. And of course, the controversy about this movie, you yeah. know, because of the Lisa Bonet thing. And mm-hmm. it, got, it was an X, and then they cut 10 seconds out to give an R or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, that was the first thing that gets you all know, interested. You're like, okay, I got to see what's so terrible about this thing. Anyway, that's neither here nor there, actually. Well, that's but, part uh, of it. I mean, it's it, part it, of the, I mean, that's part the, of what the gets you of interested it. in it. Yeah. yeah. It wants, mm-hmm. you know, it kind of gets you a. Uh, curious about it it's the hook yeah sort of but then you know i saw it and i was like wow this i really really enjoyed this movie i didn't find anything deep or earth shattering or life changing about it mm-hmm. but I, i'm, I'm sort of in the same boat with you is this is one of the early impressions of a, of a movie where i was like wow this is yeah. something a little bit different and it was mm-hmm. uh, you know i can't think of any uh, somebody else knows one of sort of a no noir gumshoe movie that's devil in a blue dress horror um, no that's not Horror, no, no, that's not the one I'm thinking of. I'll that's get back song. to you. Yeah, I'll get back to you. There's one I'm thinking of though. But, but uh, yeah, that, I thought it was pretty original in that yeah. in that content uh, context. I, I like the overall look of the movie. I like the way mm-hmm. it was filmed. It was dark. There was a lot going on. And the surprise, I, I was genuinely surprised at the end of the movie when you find out, you know, the twist. So I really liked. I liked all the elements of the film. There's the thing that keep it from going a little higher was it did get a bit confusing there at the end. And there was a little bit of a plot hole, I thought. But other than that, you yeah, know, it didn't take that much away from it for me. Yeah. So I'm sticking. I'm going with an eight. There I really, really like this movie. I always, I've always liked this movie. Yeah, I me as well. Me as well. We'll talk about some of the scenes too. And we'll dig into that plot hole. See what we come up with. Uh, I think we went over to a hard sub savage. Yeah, is that what it was? Uh, tell me what your impression is of this film and why and why you got there. Okay. Uh, first impression, the first time seeing the film again, ignorant, completely going into it, mm-hmm. uh, had it confused in my mind what it was going to be. Yeah. Um. And then it turns out to be a period piece, a very well done period piece yes. too. Yeah. Uh, you know, the fifties noir. And I think you said horror, horror noir or mm-hmm. modern noir right. or whatever. Yeah. Um, Parker really pulled it off. I mean, the, uh, the use of shadows is tough to pull off and in, in color. It's much easier to do in black and white when you're dealing with just contrast. Um, he pulled it off. Yeah. The tone of the thing was 
somber enough. Mm -hmm. And and then you lay the mystery on top of it. And, you know, when Cypher is introduced and it's, you know, Harry Angel, and you you Mm kind of understand, okay, this guy's the devil, and you kind of understand what he wants him to look for. Yeah. And I, I thought that was really neat. I thought mm-hmm. I thought the amnesia thing was a neat twist in the mystery. It's like, oh, if somebody gave up their soul and then they got amnesia, do you yeah. still have to pay? I thought it was a cool right, twist, right. you know. And then you know the 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 mystery, the the pursuing of the mystery, it was really well done. And I, I think the reason why I went to Harlem, or Harlem, I'm sorry, New Orleans from Harlem, is because it was winter time or it was cold and they're wearing overcoats. And you don't want Lisa Bonet in an overcoat. No, you don't. You know, no. <laughs> you want her in something as light and as thin as you can get. And, uh, <laughs> didn't consider, but right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. And, you know, I spent a, a lot of my childhood in Southern Louisiana as well. So that right. those, those scenes and those people are familiar to me as well. Yeah. And you know what uh, Parker said to, he said, this was the film I threw myself into more than any of my other films. I wanted the details to work. I wanted you to look past the characters through the set into the surroundings and get, uh, the sense that you were there. Yeah. He says that I put so much effort into that, uh, that, that part of this film alone. And you felt like that was pretty well, well done. No, I don't, yeah. The, the mystery of it was really yeah. well done. The, the, the technical aspect, it's a good looking film and it's, it's a well crafted film. Mm-hmm. And then Mickey Rourke was really good. I don't know what happened to Mickey Rourke in the early nineties or something. Whatever happened to him? He just know, got, man. he just dropped off and got weird and homeless big and, and he did. He got weird homeless drugs. and he also got into boxing right. and, uh, and uh, now he's Marv, man. So he's back. Yeah, you know, he came back, but he looks all weird now, you know, but, but he was a really good actor back in the day, man. I mean, he was really good. He had just enough menace. He had just enough intimidation. He had, I mean, he really pulled it off. And then at the twist at the end, Mm. I did not see it coming. Yeah. I mean, they dangled out in front of you and in hindsight, you're like, Oh, of course. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, there was a plot hole with, uh, I don't know if it's the same plot hole Max was talking about. Oh, no, with, I hope it is. I don't want a bunch uh, of plot holes. <laughs> oh, no, this movie sucked. <laughs> right? No, but uh, it seems like uh, when Cypher hired him, and you understand who Cypher is, right? he should have known, you know. The devil don't need to hire a private investigator. You know, uh, guys, I don't think he knew at that point. No, what, the devil knew? Of course he did. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Of course he did. But you know what I think? And a lot of people mention this. Right. I just think that he's, it just shows his mischievous side. Absolutely. He, he wanted to like put this guy in it like a rat in a cage and just watch him figure it out on his and own. And poke him with it. Yeah. yeah, poke him with it. He was yeah. having fun. It was mischievous. Yeah. I don't think he had to do this. I think he enjoyed it. No, yeah. No, and, I, and that's how it works. Yeah. Uh, so I may actually go up with this the more I think about it. I mean, it, mm-hmm. it's a really well done film. Yeah, I think so. Too. Let's go over to uh, Hoodie. Uh, for the most part, I pretty much agree with James. Um, didn't enjoy the ending as much as you guys seem to mm-hmm. have enjoyed it. That's kind of why I'm teetering between a six and a seven. Um, what, what did you want from the ending? More of an unwinding point. I mean, just a little bit more. Yeah. It did just, seem to it like, just like here stopped. we go. Yeah, it's just yeah. like, there's a twist. Credits. So <laughs> maybe a little bit more reaction from okay. either of them. Maybe some, I don't know. I can't think. Anyway, uh, as far as it being a period piece, I thought everybody did a really good job except for Rourke. And he looked straight out of the 80s. Oh, straight man. Straight out of the 1980s. Are you serious? His hair was spiked straight up. Oh, I thought he was gumshoe 50s all the sweating. way, man. No, oh, he was the, straight I out of the 80s. I love that character he even had, here. Everything he had was a... And he'd be wearing his tie up to like, you know, way above his belly button if it was in the 50s, too. He had it below the belt. I don't know, He man. was straight out of the 80s. This and that, that my... kind of threw me out of it every time right. I looked at I'll him. I'll get to that because... Well, uh, cut me off then. I have some for that. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, sorry. Cut me off like a tie. Cut me off like an 80s tie. Yeah, but I mean, his pants would have been hiked up. A lot more, not as baggy. Did and you want Fred Mertz in this role? What the <laughs> hell did you? <laughs> want? I, I thought about that too. That he couldn't have been, you know, as cool as he was in this movie if he was trying to be the fifties guy. But then I was like, well, you know what? A good actor probably could have. He's not bad. I like him way better now than I did back then. Okay, who did you sell your soul to? You must have <laughs> Marlon sold Brando. your soul. Marlon did you Brando. really? <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Who are we going to now? Uh, yeah, 1987, Angel Heart. We well, we know you love the film. Yeah, Come yeah. on, the cat is out of the bag. The gumbo's out the bowl. <laughs> the chickens are the chickens out of the coop, man. Right. It's no I'm secret. Of the chickens. Yeah, I get a thing for chickens. Uh, tell me why you like this film so much. Uh, actually, from just childhood, it was the first movie I ever saw that it was a puzzle to me. You know, loved yeah. trying to figure out this as a puzzle. But as a kid, I actually figured out that De Niro was the devil at the beginning because of the name. Really, you got that? Yeah, really quick. Mm-hmm. 
I guess it wouldn't be too hard. I was hard. big into the occult. Yeah. <laughs> no. Actually, I didn't. I was trying to anagram it and everything. <laughs> I yeah. Like, I guessed it pretty quick. And, I was and like, at the oh, end, it was like, this. oh. And the nails yeah. went away really quick. I was the same way, too. I didn't catch the Louis Cipher. Oh, mm, nice, nice. Plus, Harry yeah. Angel, do it conveniently. Yeah. I just yeah. said, uh, well, that's a stupid name. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I could have come up with a way better name than that. All right. Let me tell you what I thought of this film. Uh, what works about this film? I think everything. Yeah. I mean, it just all worked for me. I mean, the acting. To me, you were talking a little bit about Rourke. I think he strolls through this thing uh, with such charisma, spot on delivery. I think it's a graceful, powerful performance. I mean, when I first saw this, I thought, man, that's the first, that's the first performance I truly loved. And it's my favorite performance at that time, 1987, late 80s, whatever you want to call it, that era. Um, you know, but the same goes for everyone here. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's something in the uh, dirty rice or the soul food in Harlem. <laughs> right. But in Holland. Yeah. And it holds up like that too, because every exchange between the characters, you know, it just seems to be effortless. Right, even scenes that were like a bridge, like Rourke's scene with the nurse at the hospital. Yeah. It's fantastic. This thing just purred for me. It was almost like the American, where I just I was just waiting endlessly for the thing to just give me more and more and more. So that's where it starts for me, man, the performances. And uh then there's the film craft, Alan Parker. Yeah. You know a director resonates with you when you remember his name and you look for it again. And that's what he does for me because uh I sought out David Gale when it came out. Okay, there's a film with a Kevin Spacey. Wait a minute. Alan Parker directed this thing. I'm going Friday when it opens. Sure. What happened to the guy? Alan Parker. Uh, He's still making stuff. Right? He made something. Get on that, producer. It's like 2011. 2012. Yeah, but Alan Parker. Not Alan Parker. No, he hasn't done anything since 03 with The Life of David Life, Gale. Life of David Gale. I can't recommend that film enough, too. We must talk about this. He's still living, time. so maybe That's always, retired. Well, since it, well, you don't necessarily have to be alive to right. get stuff done. We learned that in this film. Soderbergh retires. This whole thing that I like uh, <laughs> about this film is that it takes these different roads, puts them down on the same path, and takes you for one, quote, unquote, hell of a ride. Uh, right? The horror and war experiment. It's just perfectly placed, but that's exactly what it pulls off here. All the fine print it needed in order to do so falls in line perfectly like a puzzle. Like the score, the the loose keys on the piano. Yeah. It just takes you from that essence, 1950s gumshoe, that whole mentality, and then it goes into the crackling of the vinyl, and then it goes into the, the, the horns of Bourbon Street, and it just kind of just, just pulls you along like a thread in a sweater, you know? Um, it all just punched above its weight. Really, this whole film just punched above its weight to me. And then, the, and then there's the calling card, the the, the sinister horror and war. Yeah, right. That's very interesting. You don't see that often. I think you mentioned that as well. Nope. Totally, uh, totally sold me. Uh, just rang up perfectly to me. That's what I think of it. So I didn't really pick up much of the horror stuff. You know, I, there was definitely a layer of menace in the thing. Maybe that's a better word, menace. You know, because horror just seems like a different genre to you me. Know. And you know, maybe that's just me being. I don't know, traditional or whatever. I don't know. Or suspense. Yeah. Maybe suspense. No, it was definitely suspenseful. Word. And there was, there was genuine menace to it. I mean, there, mm -hmm. the tone was set for that, but. How about supernatural noir? Better. Is that supernatural. Better? We, I I'm just going coined by. that. Well, Boom. The, <laughs> supernatural noir. <laughs> uh, Super noir. Yeah, horror does seem a little bit heavy handed. It's not necessarily a horror film. You got to be no. careful throwing that word out there. Yeah, it's not, and you don't want to give people the impression that this is a horror film, you know, because it may turn people off of it. Who well, no, but it does take it. that horror. You know, aspect at the end, especially with all the eyes looking at you, the baby looking and pointing. That's some. That's pretty bad yeah. effects that's, too. Those that, did not. Oh, it was up. awful. It was that, just. Yeah, that was the one part <laughs> I hated about this whole entire film. But with the you can't put that in any movie and not yeah. call it a horror, like straight up horror. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll so, do supernatural. It's not a slasher. It is a horror. It yeah. is a classic horror film. Yeah. Well, it's an interesting horror film. It's there. Um, it's certainly wrapped up into this noir and into this gumshoe riddle. Sure. You know, you know, follow the follow the breadcrumb trail thing. Uh, but I tell you, let's take a break here. Let's listen to a clip, a piece from the film we're talking about, 1987, Angel Heart, directed by Alan Parker. We'll come back, talk about some of these scenes, and uh, tell you what we thought in detail. Here you go. There was a picture of Johnny with a guy called Toot Sweet, a guitar player. No one's heard of him for years. Now here's the juicy bit. He was engaged to a rich broad named name of Margaret Cruzmark. Dad Ethan owns half of Louisiana. Met Johnny at a high school prom in New Orleans. Oh yeah, there's lots of spells. Spells? What do you mean spells? I mean like uh, Ivan Newton and Tova Frog? Seems she's a bit of a crackpot. Casting spells, society dues and stuff. Didn't go down too well with the Ivy League stiffos. Did I do good? Yeah, you did great. So what do I got? I got some kind of religious loony for a client. I gotta find Johnny Golden Tonsils. We don't know where he is. He probably doesn't know who he is. I got a geriatric band leader in a home in Harlem. I 
got a guitar player called Toot Sweet. What else I got? Are you okay? Okay, so there you go. There's a clip, a piece from the film that we're talking about tonight, Angel Heart. We're going to go around the table. We're going to talk about a few scenes that stuck out to us that we think's worth merit, that we think is worth conversation. See, uh, I would like to talk about. That you want to get into. Uh, I like the first meeting between Harry and Louis. Love that scene. And ironically, you mentioned a scene earlier that I thought was fantastic, where he goes to the hospital and has that big conversation with the nurse. And he looks and at her bum as she walks away. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then Who he's, was that nurse? The whole, she looked familiar. Yeah, whole, she's been a lot of stuff. She's that girl she's been who a lot played of the nurse shows. and Harry and Angel. She looks just like Joan Cusack. Watch the film again. Yeah, I, thought I, it thought it I thought it was. I thought it was. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Kathleen yeah. Wilhite. Oh, look at that. Producing on the fly. Right. Ooh. I have pages pulled up. <laughs> but you know what's funny? I, I like I like movies where you remember things that really, you know, in the script and on paper, you're not supposed to. But the scene like that, yeah, it just sticks to me. Yeah, I, I really, really like that scene in the hospital. I, and I don't know why. I guess he was just so charming in it. And that's what, yeah. that was his job. He was supposed to be there charming and say, oh, look, I can get this information from this woman. And he pointed out the thing about the ballpoint pen. And yep. She was like, oh, really? Mm-hmm. He, says, he could have asked her to bed right there and she would have gone. Yeah, maybe that's what it was, too, because he just got out of bed with someone else, too, by the uh-huh. way. But you got a sense that this guy understands how to manipulate me. Oh, yeah. And he he's good at knows it. What he's doing. And he became interesting to me there. Yeah, he was. Yeah. I, I, I thought he was an interesting character from the get-go. The other thing about the character, and this this showed up in the when he met with De Niro, He's sort of, uh, I don't know, what's the way he, he came across almost as childlike. Yeah. He's very mm-hmm. flummoxed. He was nervous. He didn't know what to say. He yeah. kept apologizing for saying his name wrong. Mm-hmm. And he was thinking, oh, yeah. I yeah. don't know. I don't know the name. Should I? Why I, was he intimidated in that presence? Was he on some level aware that, okay, dad caught me? Yes. I got caught with my hand in the cookie jar? I think so. I, I don't know if that's what it is. I, I think he just... Uh, he didn't know the circumstances of it. He was called by this guy, and then he's got to come in and meet this guy. And uh, he didn't get any details. They wouldn't really tell him much, and they were real effusive with the, with the what they were doing. He said, "Well, would this guy skip out on you?" And he goes, "Yeah, yeah kind of." Yeah, yeah. They I wouldn't don't really like, tell him what it I was. I don't like messy it. accounts. Yeah, I don't like uh, messy accounts. Yeah, I like every scene with him and De Niro. Yeah, they met, not many. When they met in the restaurant. It when they met like in the De Niro church. was a day four. player. Right? There was four. There was four scenes. Four scenes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the restaurant, the church, the initial meeting, and then the, the, the final end, meeting. The final, the final, final meeting, yeah. Uh, what about you, Savage? Let's talk about something you got to talk about. Uh, yeah, when you start to know that this is a mystery and you, see, and then you, you put on your critical thinking hat, you're like, oh, okay, I gotta, I gotta pay attention to things here. And I don't know if anybody else picked it. Whenever he would open a drawer, there'd be a gun and he never had a gun and he never used a gun, but he, he always had, there was always a weapon within his reach and they always had that ring of skeleton keys. Anytime he was going through his stuff, there was always the ring of skeleton. I didn't pick up on that. And then when he locked the door for Mm -hmm. the doctor the first time, you know, Fowler, Fowler, when he locked that door and I thought, okay, this is how he collects his skeleton keys, Mm -hmm. you know, and maybe there is something to that because when you find out at Mm -hmm. the end what's going on, um, Uh, well, one, one quick thing too, do you know that every, uh, weapon that was used to kill somebody he had originally handled? Mm -hmm. It showed him handling it before it happened. No, I didn't pick up on that at all. Didn't pick up on it. Fowler's gun. The knife, sweet, 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 sweet razor, mm-hmm. right? And there was something I read somewhere that every time somebody dies, there was like a, there was a scene of a fan, yeah, and then the fan would stop and then go backward, yeah. And I didn't pick up on that, but mm-hmm. if that's true, that's that's a neat little effect. There's a lot yeah. of fans in the movie. Yeah, well, I, again, the 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 twist at the end completely caught me off guard. I didn't see yeah. it coming at all. Right. When uh, you say the twist, you mean the name reveal or like the actual twist? No, the actual twist okay. of okay. like, oh, this is what's going Smashes on. Smashes the jar and then it's like, yeah. boom, there it is. Yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't see that coming at all. But there was a couple of things that, that kind of took me out. I don't know if our GTAs are what takes you out of the film, but uh, the the Gumbo Man, the the father, mm-hmm. um, that seemed a little rushed to me. It's like. Okay, we had this ceremony and we did the boy. And, I mean, it just, it just, this, this whole expository stuff just, just like, mm. just spewed out right really? there. There's that big collapse. It was like a big collapse, a house of cards falling down. Yeah. And maybe yeah. that's what it was. Maybe that's what it was supposed to be. 
But that just seemed forced to me. It's what? like, mm-hmm. it's, we're wrapping this up. Here we go. We're going in for yeah. the final stretch, and you got to expose all this stuff. And he had so many weapons to kill this guy with, and he used gumbo. Well, no, and I want to I want to get to that gumbo. Do you cook gumbo in giant pots like that? You can, yeah. I mean, that, you're feeding a lot, of, a lot people. of people. You're feeding a lot Wouldn't of people. Wouldn't you rather have a giant vat rather than a small bowl? What's wrong with that? Don't Man. nitpick this. That was the best part of the film. <laughs> was I was giant, hungry. That was a giant pot of gumbo. Hey, can I mention this scene, though, real quick, though? That is one that, while we got to talk about, I was going to talk about that. That scene with the father to me, when he's just tearing that ice apart, right? And he's just, and he completely comes unglued. Yeah. I mean, Harry Angel, he loses it. Mm-hmm. This guy's busting up. Right. And he's just taking it out. You mother, this, that, and hitting that, uh, that block of ice and it's flying all around this guy. To me, that made me sit up, man. That was a great scene to me. I understand the rushed part of it. Right. But still, it brought me in and I almost felt like I had to get in between the two of these guys. You know, it was like, <laughs> it would have been good for him. <laughs> it wouldn't have been good for him, but I thought that was a powerful scene. Well, I really liked that scene. Yeah. No, it, I understand your point where he's, Harry's doing his thing. But it just seemed, you know, from a narrative, it just seemed it seemed to rush to me. It's like, yeah. okay, yeah. let's let's get this exposition out real quick, yeah. and so we can explain what's going on. I really want to know why this was going to get an X. Can you guys enlighten me? Do you know that scene? The love scene with him and his with the red rain. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Red rain. I didn't the know if it was that or nudity, or if there was more. I mean, or, or okay. Isn't on Netflix? Isn't the whole the original one on Netflix? Is no, that, is that the, what we watched? We didn't watch the unrated with the ten seconds. That is. That's the. Yeah, they restored that. To the, like, the, if you watch it on DVD, they restored it back to the DVD. Did they? Yeah, they only cut it out for theater. So if the that was made, really, like, now, do you think it would have an X rating? No, I mean, it seems... I don't know. No. I doubt it. It's one heck of a scene. You want to talk about that? No. We I want to talk about the ending. Go ahead. Because I didn't like the ending. I thought it just ended, oh, eh, the and ending. then it just... It we're done. So explain why it's so good. Why it's good to me? Well, first of all, look at Mickey Rourke in that scene. It looked like he'd been up for six days. And he's sitting there, I mean, just drenched in gumbo and sweat and funk and daughters and all kinds of <laughs> daughters. And when he gumbo, comes, sweat, and when funk he comes and up in that exchange to me, I mean, you, you seen him one last gasp, desperately trying to hold on to this lie. I know you're trying to frame me. I didn't kill Fowler. I, 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 I didn't kill those people. You're trying to frame me. You think just because you can uh, scare some people, you're going to scare me? Well, I know who I am. And that whole scene and that dialogue with Rourke, and you can just see that grin coming yeah. up on De Niro's face like, no, I got you, son. But that, just the aesthetic of Rourke in that scene when he's screaming in that mirror and smashing and he holds those uh, dog tags up, I don't care um, so much about how it was written or how rushed it was. The visuals in the exchange was some of the best I've seen. I loved that scene because of Rourke, especially in there. Yeah, he's a, he's what killed the whole thing for me. I mean, God, I and it goes that. back to the '80s thing, really. He just it just threw me out of it all the time. When you say the difference is, mm. when I saw his hair like that, I thought it was sweat. You thought it was gel. It is gel. <laughs> it was sweat. It's '80s gel. In it the was fifth, straight up. No, no, I'm was, surprised he didn't have a flock of seagulls going on. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> that performance, especially at the end. Uh, I mean, he looked miserable. I mean, I, I I think that what worked for me with him was, you had to almost act from the soul. No pun intended here, but he did. I could feel him almost become Harry Angel. Especially in that last scene, my, yeah. my favorite scene in the film. Okay, I'm not sorry. me. But yeah. what do you want to talk about uh, uh, besides that? Nothing. We had the egg thing. I like the egg thing. That's about the only thing I wrote down. There's four scenes that we talked about with De Niro. The the De Niro thing and the exchange between Rourke and De Niro work. Some people don't like that. I liked De Niro in this a lot. Did you? Uh, I I don't know if I wanted to see him more. I want to say that I would like to have seen him more, but I think one of the, one of the strengths of the movie is how little you see De Niro. That kind of makes him more on him. On uh, that um, word, ominous. ominous, ominous, my lips. I'm with you on that too. <laughs> ominous, my lips. You know what we need to do? Let's listen to De Niro right now. Let's listen to him play a little bit of Louis Cipher, or is it Lucifer? Did I just give it away? <gasps> uh, spoiler gas, alert. gas, spoiler. It looks like our Johnny has found himself a perfect disappearing act. Seems so. Well, you know what they say about slugs. No, what do they say about slugs? They always leave slime in their tracks. You'll find them. No, I won't find them. Mm. Hey, look, I took on $125 a day missing persons job with you, all right? Now I'm a murder suspect. That's it. I'm out. Are you afraid? Yeah, I'm afraid. You know, some religions think that the egg is the symbol of the soul. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. (sighs) 
Would you like an egg? No, thank you. I got a thing about chickens. Uh, yeah, there's a scene right there from uh, from Angel Heart, the film we're talking about, 1987. De Niro playing the devil, Lucifer. Could have been Marlon Brando. You think those were press on nails, or you think he actually those are great had nails. to grow those? He's out. a method actor. I bet he grew them. Why does the I devil bet you always actually right. grew his hair too? You're probably yeah. right. He probably actually changed it. He probably it. turned into the devil. Here's yeah. a At least when he hung out with him. Went to- <laughs> Anybody <laughs> notice that De Niro played two parts in this film? The the person that kept scrubbing the blood off the walls, and at the end when he's sitting out, yeah, the, that's him. That's the Nero yeah, man. I, I stopped crazy. and rewound it and froze it. Mm, really? Yeah, yeah, well, shaven, clean shaven. Does that mean the devil lurked around the corner the whole time? He's always taking around. different forms. I guess maybe he was the people I, killing the people in the church. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of all kinds of uh, really good stuff in here, um, and we'll talk about the scene that got uh, <laughs> uh, Huxtable kicked off the show. Right. I think she was fired. Was it because of this, Max? That she was fired? No, she was pregnant at the time. No, she was pretty much. Everybody yeah. pretty much except she was basically kicked off the Cosby show because of this. I mean, this was huge news. I know I know. Bill Cosby said, please don't do this film. But, you know, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Have a Coke and a smile. Eat a Jell-O pop. Right. And just chill out. Wow. Uh, shut up. Shut up, yeah. <laughs> Put on your Cosby sweater. Uh, Adam, the Bomb Rogers. Uh, Got to talk about. What do you want to get into? What I want to really talk about is, did any of y'all notice that Johnny Favorite, Mickey Rourke, yeah. was dead up John Constantine? I, I did catch I, that. That's all I could think about watching this. I don't this. know. What and are you I talking looked, about? John Constantine, Hellblazer. Uh, the comic book. I don't, comic book. I don't know what you're and talking about. And also the movie Constantine. I, I need to see this because it's been brought up. I haven't seen Can't it. Yeah, it's a decent yeah. flick. I remember watching this as a kid. I don't see the corollary. In though. fact, I was a big fan of Hellblazer. I read, I read well, it every it week. And I was like, the man, they, they come, if they do a, a Hellblazer movie, they got to get Mickey Rourke. they got to get him to play it. And, of course, they didn't. Huh. It would have been better. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you, you know what he's talking about. Oh, yeah, John okay. Constantine, okay. Hellblade. Oh, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um, Hoodie, you said you had a little something you wanted no, to throw no, out there. No, no, just speaking it? of He Looks Like Constantine, I thought that this movie took a lot of nods from Chinatown. Yeah. As far as the, obviously the noir, but uh, in Chinatown he gets his nose cut, and in this one he had the uh, the glasses on. The nose, nose shield. Yeah, he, he, there, there, was, there was a lot of similarities. You, have, you talk about twists at the end, too. Yeah. So my, And the guy put that knife yeah. up to his nose, too. My mother, my sister, my when daughter, my out. sister. When he fell over in the crab thing, and the yeah. crabbed him. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Oh, he put the chicken foot up on his nose. That yeah, yeah so. that's right. Did you notice how many things here looked authentic, too? When he fell into those crabs, I'm like, dang, that guy just fell into some crabs. Yeah, I think did. I saw him wincing, too. Yeah, wincing. He's... And there's also a scene in Harlem where someone gets knocked off. They're carrying, like, the Pope of Harlem right. on that big chair. Oh, oh his Rolls yeah. Royce. That dude got knocked off the chair. And look at his back. He was out of wind laying on the ground. They went to some lengths to make things real <laughs> right. in this film. That was one thing I wanted to bring up I noticed in the movie. <laughs> when they were at the church. What was his name? Reverend John or whatever? Did you notice what the sign behind him said? What's up? Reverend John is God. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, It yeah. literally said this guy was God. And he said, I want you to open your pocketbooks and yeah. open your wallets. If you think it's, y'all think yeah. I should be driving a Cadillac, I think I yeah. should be driving a Rolls Royce. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Send me your money. And then they carried him through <laughs> down on that chair. Like, what is uh, this thing on? is full of just this little bit of, uh, uh, just you say noir, but just these sets and these scenes just yeah. seemed authentic. Hey, let's talk about uh, Lisa Bonet, though. Let's get back into that. Her her character, uh, she played. I could have made a real bad joke yeah, I right know, there. Right, I'm not going to do it. Let's get back into that. <laughs> We're going to end on a high note with this thing, but uh, Epiphany Proudfoot. Oh, great name. Beautiful, beautiful woman. And boy, her, her kid shuts up when he she tells him to be quiet. Did you pick that up? And she didn't even have to really forcefully tell she him. She said, Easy. be quiet. She had some kind of spiritual noose on him. She's okay. an angel. What did you think about that? There's, there's two scenes that Lisa Bonet went out on a limb for in this film. The sex scene, but also the chicken pouring yourself in chicken blood scene, the yeah. the, the voodoo, voodoo stuff. scene. Yeah, uh, any of that uh, work for you? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, to a degree. Again, it's uh, I spent a lot of time in Southern Louisiana as a child, so this is it's not unfamiliar things, and it's not removed from reality either. Yeah, it's this really goes on. Mm-hmm. I mean, I never witnessed it as a child going on, but I do know people who have, and it's it's a real thing. Yeah, it totally worked. It totally worked. It it seemed real and it, it wasn't made more extravagant yes. than what it, the reality of it is yeah so it didn't seem forced in that way there was some restraint now the the scene in the the hotel room with the red rain that's <laughs> but that's you know stylistic instead of realistic that was just confusing to me but it worked for me it mm-hmm. did it, it set a flavor man mm, but uh lisa benet in, in 87 the height of, maybe the height of her her beauty just an absolutely stunning stunningly beautiful woman at yeah. the time stunningly beautiful you can't take your eyes off of her. And I think what worked here was that you have that beauty and that innocence doing some very uninnocent things. Yeah. 
once again, that contrast. What about you, Max? Oh, did, as far as did the voodoo stuff work? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I did grow up in that area. <laughs> and you did your voodoo. And, and you did make dead white guy gumbo. Yeah. Every black person I knew in that part of the country was a Baptist. So I didn't see any of that stuff funny. going on. Because <laughs> most people that practice voodoo are Catholics. It's funny because there's a uh, line in this film going, we ain't all Baptists down here. You know that. Yeah, right. You? Yeah. Hoodie. Um, you know, talking about Lisa Bonet. Because he, he, you say Angel Heart, people go, oh, that film that Lisa Bonet was in that ruined Cosby. Um, did you like her performance here? Oh, yeah. I thought she was fantastic in this. Mm-hmm. Did she seem uh, like she was from the 80s? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I guess so. Because I know Lisa Bonet from the 80s, so right. I guess that didn't help Rourke's thing. But I, yeah, I stand by that. I think Rourke was straight out of the 80s in this. Maybe it was, it was not of the 50s, I'll tell you Maybe that. Maybe it was just Moose. Maybe it was like Dapper Dan. Yeah. Looks Dapper like, Dan. I'm done. Whatever. I'm not going to say it again. But that, that, uh, of the 80s. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> but that scene between him and Bonet, um, that seemed, once again, talk about realism. I don't know how they faked that one. Were you with me on that one? Because it's like, this is the one of the most unsettling scenes I've ever seen in a film. And um, it's not just because there's blood, but the way the blood fell, the way it came down, the way it hit the back, the way it hit the small of the back, it just, man, it just really set me back, man. And it does every time I see it. Did you get that kind of effect from that? <laughs> no, I didn't really like that scene. At all. I didn't either. I didn't, I didn't think that that was the X-rated scene. You it's didn't? like, that um, is the expert. I, fi- uh, I figured it was, but I'm I'm still watching it going, yeah. well, you know, this isn't the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. I can't believe people are getting yeah. fired over this. What about this? when Mickey Rourke makes love to that chicken? The, well, oh, that, wait. No, that was the X-rated scene. I'm sorry. That was oh, after the credits. That was the one that cut out. <laughs> said he had a problem with it. He had a problem with chickens. <laughs> uh, hey, one more thing before we wrap this up, though. Uh, this does have some effects. Who did I talk to about this being really bad on the effects? The effects did Just not the, hold well. The eyes, Just the eyes. contacts were, were horrible. Or the in kids. This. I didn't yeah. think yeah. they were contacts. It looked I, well, like they the, was one thing I do say about the contacts, at least it wasn't the stupid what the electric eighties right. you know what I'm saying? The glowing I feel eye like it things. was that. No, it looked more bad. like animation to me. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking too. Yeah. That it was the electric glowy things. It looked like co- <laughs> it looked like Excel cut and paste with that baby's head on it. And that, and they really <laughs> killed it. I know for the time it was probably like, Oh my god, that was oh crazy god. awesome. But now <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, I know. And maybe that's why I kept it from going 10 because I kept thinking, come on, did you just literally run out of money for the last shot? <laughs> um, I have one quick point. Yes. At the beginning, I said there was a minor plot hole Ooh, in here. Your plot hole. Cruise Mark and all of those people that were involved in the ceremony yeah. to turn Johnny into mm-hmm. Harold, right. wouldn't they have known? Recognized him, you mean? Well, I know he had plastic surgery, but he couldn't have had that much plastic surgery. We're talking about voodoo. We're talking about the devil. I'm sure that when he ate the guy's soul, maybe he took on somewhat of his appearance. Let's just go with that. I don't I know. That's just, what he did. He took on his appearance after he ate his heart. Maybe I don't get this movie. Yeah, but it, it was just, that, 12 years, 43 to 55. I don't know. It just my, seemed like they would have recognized that the two him. merged in a different body. Is that right? Yeah, that's how that's, I explained that away. Yeah. No, it, they kidnapped him in Times Square. After the war. Right, and then the two souls merged into his body so they wouldn't have recognized the kidnapped guy. I don't know. That's, that's how I That's why that. I was a little confused. His daughter didn't recognize him. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, so there you go. Yeah, you know, and all those things that don't necessarily tie up to me, it fray just a bit, I'm okay with that because it's just so cool and I love the gel in the hair. It's fantastic. <laughs> At least you're admitting it's gel. Well, it's gel. <laughs> and then the, the 50s fashion had kind of come back in the 80s. So that can be allowed. He smoked a lot in this film. Yeah, and that's 50s. Cool. Matches he lit with his fingernail. God, that is. I cool. do like. I do like that. Those are awesome. <laughs> I do like. And then if you, if you light a match foot. off of a shoe, I'm I'm in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Teach me that trick. Uh, all right, so uh, there you go. There's our breakdown of 1987 Angels. Angels Heart. Angel Heart. Yeah, it was Angels Heart. <laughs> uh, we were rating this thing with uh, pinches of salt. Uh, we started out with how many? Forty. I'm 40. staying with my nine because I can't I can't go ten because of that baby's head at the end. <laughs> uh, I'll stick with my seven. Yeah, you want to stick? I'm going nine still. Let's stick. What are sticking. you doing? Are you sticking? Seven. I'll stay. Okay. It stays right. at a 40. All right. So it's currently streaming on Netflix Instant. I think we can say go ahead and watch it. Go ahead. Why not? Yeah. I mean, uh, someone, says, look. someone says I'm going to watch Angel Heart. You're not going to say why not? You say, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Unless you got to think about chickens. Unless you got to think about chickens. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So let's do this. Let's get into our top three as we do every week. Uh, top three movie Devils, devilish characters, Lucifer's top three. Devils. Devils. They've they, they got to be from the, the bowels of hell. They, they can't just be devilish characters. Right, the devils bowels of hell. Yeah. Take it any way you want. I say devils, go with it. Right. No Dennis the Menace. Right. Uh, I'll lead this one off. Lead it. Yeah. Number three. And I'm going to go and throw this out there. You guys can go, oh, look, this is a great depiction because of its ambiguity and because you don't know what this is. And the eyebrows were shaved. 
And I'm liking the devil from uh, Passion of the Christ. Never saw it. Never saw it. Okay. This this creepy. Devil. Let me great tell you devil. something. Uh, it's not as good as Apocalypto for sure. That's, in my opinion, um, I almost said Mel Brooks. <laughs> Mel Gibson's. <laughs> yeah, Mel, Mel Brooks, the Passion of the Christ. <laughs> Please make that happen. Uh, Mel Gibson's uh, film, yeah, you can part ways with it, but that is a great depiction of what evil might look like. Totally freaked me out. It's burned in my brain. That's my number three, devil. All right. You devilish, devilish man, savage. I'm going to go over to you, number three. All right, I'm going with uh, The Devil in South Park, Bigger, Longer, Uncut. That. <laughs> that was an awesome devil. That's an awesome devil. He was the funniest devil. Definitely the funniest. <laughs> right. He was just misunderstood. Yeah. You know? He was almost a sympathetic devil. All right, Hoodie, number three. Let's get to you. You're uh, t- we're talking about the top three movie demons, devils. Yeah. What's your number three? I'm bashing James, but mine's no better. I picked Hellboy. All okay. right. Yeah. Man, that's good, though. But he doesn't want to be a demon. He but doesn't. he is. Yeah, but it's he good. Is. It's a nice contrast. Yeah. He's Hook like the character so interesting. Yeah, he's That's like a nice true. guy stuck in a devil's body. And he's got that cool hand. He likes and that cats. gun. Mm, the gun. And he likes cats. And he's Ron Perlman. Yeah, Can't that's that. always yeah, that's bonus points right there. He's Ron Perlman. <laughs> and he barely had to put on any makeup to play him. <laughs> nope. Right. Hardly any. Just a fake set of cut off horns and a little red makeup. That's Boom. It. Done. Yeah. Probably took twenty minutes. <laughs> probably so. <laughs> right. Max Gumbo Johnson, appropriate for tonight. Number three, movie devil. What is it? Peter Stomar and Constantine. Of course. Yeah. With that white suit. Oh, yeah. Okay. Dripping tar. Nice. I can watch that guy in anything. Good Especially stuff. Even huh? those Dodge commercials. Mm. Or whatever those commercials <laughs> it did were. Dodge commercials. Uh, Adam, producer, number three, what? A uh, little silent movie from 1926, Faust. 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 However you want to say it. No, it's pronounced Faust. Faust. Yeah. Faust. <laughs> I never even heard of this film. Is it, all about, is it all about the, the devil? Festo. It's the original Sell Your Soul story, yeah. Faustus. It's on Netflix, too, I think. It, it is. Yeah. Uh-oh. Does that mean that we have to watch this soon? I'm not giving any hints. Doesn't mean we have to. It's, <laughs> it's pretty intense, man. It's really well done for 1929. All right. This brings Six. me to, you know what? This gets 26. me to, is it 20, that long ago? 26? Yeah. Ooh, that's a long time ago. Well, I didn't know you could talk about things like devils in 1926. Faustus, man. I'll tell you what you can talk about right now, and that's my number two. You know what that is? You're, you're what's your number one. three? You're number three. Knucklehead. I already told you. Oh, you okay, passed the number Christ. two. Oh. oh, come on. Now I'm a knucklehead. <laughs> <laughs> come on, knucklehead. <laughs> this guy Selling here. me out. <laughs> selling me out. Okay. Almost had him. Number two for me. Check this out. He who walks behind the rose. All right. Children of the cane. That's Children right. of the cane. Children of the cream corn. <laughs> Children of the cream corn. Now that's the devil, isn't it? Wasn't he who walked behind the rose? Come on. Yeah. I would no, say so. Why not? Thinking outside the it. box. Yeah, you like that, don't you? Yeah, you do. I do. I'm yeah. not, I dig it. You're darn right you do. Yeah. All right. With authority. <laughs> I'm going over to the Hard Sub Savage. Right. Blow my mind, dude. Uh, what? what v- you got? Viggo Mortensen in The Prophecy. God, that's a good one. He freaked me out when, you know, because he's so good looking and he's, you know, yeah. you would think the devil's going to be looking. And then when he looks at the guy and he's like, I love you more than Jesus. It just freaks me Yikes. out. Yikes. <laughs> that freaks me out. Yeah. I'm going to have to sit next to him now. Yeah. <laughs> it freaked me out. So, yeah, Viggo Mortensen, The Prophecy. Uh, what's your number two? I what can't believe it hasn't been said yet. I think probably because everybody's holding out for number one. you got to go Legend. Okay. Yeah, Tim Curry. Tim Love, Curry. No, it's, it's brilliant. It is brilliant. Iconic, was, actually. I would say that's one of the most iconic Also, devils. it was uh, written by the same guy who wrote this. We'll Legend see. was written by the same guy who wrote uh, Angel Heart. Is it really? Yeah. William Hortzberg? Yeah. It's huh. Hertz, It's Hertzborg. It's Hertzborg. Hertzborg. Good to know stuff. He wrote the book. Wow. Also, the Tim, Curry, Tim Curry didn't have to put much makeup on either for that. <laughs> Just a couple of horns and some yep, red paint. Red. Yep, that's all he did. <laughs> the Hellboy prototype. <laughs> I bet you if he filed the horns down, he would be. He would be Hellboy. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right, so what are you going with, uh, Adam, number two? Whoa. Oh, you okay. guys are just not nope, connecting at all. Send me first. <laughs> oh, wait. Did I miss you? Oh, yeah, sorry. Nope, no, up. I'm going. Listen, I'm, I'm going. multitasking. I'm, going. I'm trying to look I, at notes. No, no, I'm going Damien from The Omen. He just put a stomping on it. I uh, had to do it. I'm sorry, Gumbo. I didn't mean to overlook you. That's okay. That's, yeah. okay. That's no problem. That was the devil's son. Uh, yeah, Damien, man. Of course. The Damien devil's son. That's, that's close enough. Right. That's close enough. Yeah, the great. Devil. That kid was creepy. Whew, he did as a kid. That creepy young man. When he stabbed that woman on the fence. Oh, Oh, uh, I want to push the maid out of the window. That's what he never pushed about. her. She jumped. Oh, she jumped. Okay. <laughs> she, she was happy to do it, too. Oh, for you, Damien. Yeah. Hi, Damien. Blonk. Blonk. <laughs> Blonk. <laughs> what about you, Gumbo <laughs> number two? Cut that dude's head off with a plate of glass. That <laughs> oh, that was an accident. Great scene. That was an accident. Yeah. There are no accidents when <laughs> Satan's involved. I'm going to tell you that. Uh, number two, the gypsy woman in Drag Me to Hell. 
Oh, good. <laughs> really well, demon, I don't know. Yeah, she was a demon for crying out loud. It was called Drag Me to Hell. <laughs> what a great film. And she was definitely possessed or something. You don't just fly around a car like that without something inside of you. I'm oh. telling you right now. Yeah. I've tried. You've tried, <laughs> yeah. You've tried putting something inside of you inside a car? That's not what oh, I said. He's oh. lit candles and asked for it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when I tell people, and I was in a minivan, I had plenty of room. <laughs> yeah, okay. nothing happened. Right. When I tell people I like that film just as much, if not more, than uh, Evil Dead, they look at me like I'm crazy. I'll say it anyway. Yeah, crazy. Uh, what are we up to? Number ones. <laughs> You're number one. I'm going to go with uh, South Park. I'm going to default to that. That's my number one. You already said it. I'm not going to change though. No, it's a great devil. I'm not letting you steal my thunder. Uh-uh. Uh, yeah, South Park because of uh, just the fact that it took the devil and made him completely unique. I won't follow I suit. I ain't letting Hoodie steal my thunder. It's Tim Curry in Legend. He's the best. I knew. Devil. I knew somebody oh would say God. number one. He's the best. That's funny though, because mine's actually Max's. Shut up, Constantine. <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> right. Best devil. I love that. Number one. Best. I mean the. The tar dripping, and then he just yeah. floats down yeah. into it. I was like, oh, my God, that <laughs> scares me. It gives me chills. I love it. What about you, Gumbo? It's number one, Adam's number two. <laughs> number one. Number one, movie devil inspired by the film we talked about, which is Angel Heart in 1987. I got to go with Pazuzu from The Exorcist. Oh, thank God somebody did. Uh, I, it's it's got to be done. Absolutely. God, I thought about that. I didn't know how to play that in. Did they have a name? Pazuzu. 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 That was his name. How the hell did you come up with this? Well, it they asked says him. it in the movie. He asked him. It's one of my favorite films. I don't remember. <laughs> that was the guy in the minivan with me. Oh, okay. He said, no, nah, you're not a teenage girl. I'm not going there. My van has no windows. Sure. Fine. Fine. Look, I've been out of the Exorcist game for a while now. <laughs> but I got candy. He was like, well, it's kind of tempting. I got candy. Do you have a number one for you? I am ready to go. Okay, yeah, I didn't know I could. Yeah. What's yeah. your number, number one? Number uh, one, what is it there, Adam? Angels to some, demons to others. The Cenobites and Leviathan from Hellraiser. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. good. I forgot about those. Yeah, what's the best one? You got to pick the one. The best one? Oh, come on. Pin face. Yes, pin face. I will face. slap you for that. <laughs> what? It's pin head. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he had pins on his face. What he do you did. Want me to call him? Okay. It should have been pin face. But my face. favorite was Chatterjaw. <laughs> It's yeah, Chatterjaw. Chatterjaw is a good one. Oh, Chatterjaw is a good one. That's yeah. A good impression. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about Front Butt? Was he good in that yeah. too? Or and okay, we'll move on. Step point was good too. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, let's talk about uh, Twitter. Uh, we put this out on Twitter. That's fine. We'll be all right there. We put this out on Twitter as we all do. Uh, we as, sorry as we do every week um, uh, to see what uh, kind of responses we get back. Check this out. At Kev Dylan three sixteen Al Shouty Pacino. And Devil's Advocate. Yeah, I think cause he just shouts in the whole thing. De Niro and Angel Heart. I love it when they come back with the film that inspired the whole thing. Bobby H. at Kid Minneapolis says, Billy Zane in Tales from the Crypt. Our spokesgirl came into the queue tonight, and uh, she dropped by. She says, uh, uh, Kelly O'Neill at Kelly Ewing. Jack Nicholson in The Witches of Eastwick. I yeah, thought about that one. Yeah, I forgot all about that. Yeah, I thought about that one. It was, it was on my list. Yeah, yeah. I think Jack Nicholson once in his career needs to play the devil. <laughs> I mean, it has to happen. Probably played it multiple times. Here's the one I like. At R O A Sender Rosender says Dave F and Grohl in the Pick of Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right. not bad. You want to and get F in? stands for Foo Fighter. Yeah, Foo yeah, Fighter. that's right. Foo Fighter. <laughs> I like how he spelled all F and two E F F I N Dave F and Grohl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give him the gold star. Good answer. Kyle Hall at Marvelous Zombie 616 says, don't forget Elizabeth Hurley in the Dazzle. Or George Burns in Oh God, You Devil. Oh, yeah. Oh, she yeah. was the best-looking oh. devil, I have to say. I no remember. Roseanne Barr, love. No She Devil. She love. Devil. I was waiting for it. Yeah. It's because <laughs> people have mostly forgotten that. <laughs> <laughs> Keep waiting. You have any kind of honorable mentions, uh, Max, or you want to just get uh, on with it? Pumpkin Head and the thing from Jeepers Creepers. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, guys. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. There you go. Um, that is the uh, our review, our breakdown. Of the 1987 film Angel Heart, starring Mickey Rourke, Lisa Bonet, directed by Alan Parker. And that brings us to uh, next week's big reveal. And uh, that goes over to Max Gumbo Johnson for the next one. What is it going to be? Ichi the Killer. Ichi the Killer. Ichi the Killer? No, Ichi. Ichi, like Ichi with an E-C-H-I? I-C-H-I. That's not how you spell itch. It's itch. It's a Japanese word. Oh. You're insulting our Asian listeners right now. (laughs) Yes. By a director we've already talked about. You know he's only Mickey. five foot four. The five Did you know that he's five? Mickey. How does he look in the camera? I have no idea. He uses a box. He's a yeah. giant of a man. Yeah. A so uh, Takashi Miike strikes again. <laughs> yeah, he does. But yep. uh, this was Angel Heart, and um, we are the Q Filmcast. Thanks as always for coming on in. If you want to offer us your thoughts on this film or any film that we've discussed in the past, just go to our website, thequfilmcast.net. We're always happy to hear from you. 
and we'll be happy to uh, do this again next week. Ichi, the killer. We'll see you then. Good night. <laughs>